Instrument Approach Briefings. You need them to prepare yourself to fly an approach, your examiner expects to hear one before each instrument approach, and when you get to an airline interview, you might just be asked to demonstrate one. So in this video, I'll show you how to make a thorough, professional approach briefing every time. The key to instrument approach briefings is to use the same standard format every time, and the layout of the Jefferson plate makes that really easy. We're going to use this ILS approach for runway 10 right at Aarhus in Denmark as our example. I'll talk about everything you need to know about the approach plate and how to brief yourself to fly it. I'm sat in the cruise and I'm approaching my destination of Aarhus. So I've already completed most of those tasks that we covered in the tasks en route lesson earlier. I'm expecting to be radar vectored onto the ILS and I'm ready to brief before starting my descent. So let's get into it. This is the approach briefing for the ILS DME runway 10 right at Aarhus in Denmark. It's plate 11-1 effective from the 3rd of December, 2021. The ATIS I've received information alpha, Aarhus approach frequency 119.275 is set in standby on COM1 and the next frequency I'm expecting is Aarhus Tower, frequency 118.525. After landing, ground frequency is 131.550, which is set in my COM2. The ILS Alpha Alpha Romeo, frequency 111.9, is set in both NAV1 and NAV2. The final approach course is 099 degrees, which I'll set in the CDI for both NAV1 and NAV2. The glide slope intercept is 2,000 feet at D6.6 from the Alpha Alpha Romeo 111.9, which is set in my DME. The airport elevation is 82 feet and the runway elevation is 81 feet. The MSA from the sector I'm arriving in is 1,700 feet and the highest MSA to the west and southwest is 2,300 feet. In the event of a missed approach, climb on track 099 degrees to altitude 2,300 feet. At D 5.9 Alpha Alpha Romeo, turn left inbound to the NDB to enter the hold. The Tango Lima NDB frequency is 348 and I've set that in the ADF. Glide slope check altitude at 4 DME is 1,250 feet. It's a slightly shallower than standard glide slope at 2.75 degrees. My approach speed will be 100 knots, so that gives me a descent rate of 486 feet per minute. With a little bit of a headwind on final, I'll round that down and say I require an initial descent rate of 400 feet per minute. The decision altitude for this ILS approach for Category A aircraft is 281 feet, and I have 290 set in the minimums window. The RVR for Cat A is 550 meters, but we have a note one which increases the minimum RVR to 750 meters when a flight director or autopilot or HUD to decision altitude is not used. As I'm planning to hand fly this approach without a flight director or a HUD, my minimum RVR is therefore 750 meters. The ATIS that I received earlier indicated scattered cloud at 500 feet and a visibility of 4,500 meters, so I'm expecting to become visual before decision altitude. Lastly, considering threat and error management for this approach, it's a coastal airport, so there's a risk of increased bird activity surrounding the aerodrome. Once I do become visual, I'll check the runway and the runway surroundings for any birds and if there's a risk of a bird strike, I'll initiate a go around without delay. Secondly, the cloud base is only 200 feet above my decision altitude and the visibility is poor at only 4,500 meters. So I won't assume that I'll become visual and I'll be prepared to initiate a go around at my decision altitude if necessary. So that's a pretty typical approach briefing for single pilot operations and for those of you heading into your EASA or UK instrument rating test. This video is a sample taken from our instrument rating preparation course for EASA and UK student pilots. If you want to know more about our course, you can check it out on clearflight.co.uk.